In this video, we're going to talk about LC filter in power supplies. I've shown here the LC filter right after the rectifier. It is called LC filter because obviously we see a inductor L and a capacitor C here. So hence it is LC filter. And that too, at times it is called as L section filter because if you look at the L and C formation, it looks like a L inverted in fact and flipped. Now let's start the analysis part. If you look at, at the output of the rectifier, we have both DC, the output voltage of the rectifier can be modeled as a AC source and a DC source, where the DC source value is 2 Vm by pi and the AC source value we are taking only one harmonic component that is minus 4 Pm over 3 pi cos 2 omega naught T, where 2 omega naught is the second harmonic that we are taking. That's the lowest harmonic frequency that we have at the output of the full wave rectifier where omega naught is the input main supply AC frequency, in fact angular frequency. If this is the output, we can actually show the filter here. So we have inductor here, capacitor here and load resistor and the output is taken across this which is nothing but across these two nodes. Now for our reference, let me call this is node X, this is node Y and this is node Z. So let's first try understanding the DC component part. So for DC, we know that inductor is short circuit and capacitor is open circuit. Hence the equivalent circuit would become for just the DC 2 Vm by pi inductor is short circuit. Let me represent that here and capacitor is open circuit and we have the load resistor RL. Now obviously the entire DC voltage would get dropped across the load resistor. Hence we can say that V output DC will be equal to 2 Vm by pi. Now when we come to AC part, the circuit diagram for AC model would be like this where this is node X, node Y and node Z. So now we have what is VAC that is already shown here. That is minus 4 Vm by pi times cos of 2 omega naught T. Now obviously the voltage at the output is VYZ which is measured across these two nodes Y and Z. Now let's find what is the output voltage. The output voltage will be equal to impedance across YZ divided by the impedance across XY plus the impedance across YZ times the VAC which is the input voltage. This is like a voltage divider network where we have these two is one impedance and this is one impedance. So that's what we have written here that is the inductor part is shown as XY and this is shown as ZYZ and that's the same here. Now we know that ZXY is equal to J omega L and ZYZ is equal to the parallel combination of capacitor and resistor that is XC in parallel with RL. If the inductor is large compared to, which means if ZXY is very, very large compared to ZYZ, which means the reactance offered by inductor is far greater than the overall impedance of the capacitor and resistor in parallel, then most of the AC supply would get dropped across the inductor. So that we can write the output voltage expression as ZYZ over ZXY approximately because ZXY plus ZYZ would be approximately ZXY because ZXY is far greater than ZYZ. Now let's look at ZYZ. If you look at ZYZ that is XE in parallel with RL, we have seen in capacitor filter in previous videos that we always take that XE is far less compared to RL. In that case, Xe in parallel with Rl will be approximately Xc. So hence, we can write 
of course this is multiplied with VAC so hence we can write this equal to ZYZ is XE parallel to RL which is approximately XE given the assumption XE is far less than RL so we can write XC over XL times VAC this is going to be the output voltage so if you want to pictorially represent that is let's say the entire AC is coming like this majority of it gets dropped across the inductor here and a very small component would go here depending on how we choose the values of L C and R and of course we have made all the assumptions that we have been showing here that is XL is far greater than XE in parallel with RL and then we also made the assumption that XE is far less than RL so these are the two key assumptions that we have made in fact VO that we have written is the AC output voltage so hence let me represent that here VOAC now let us find what is the peak value of the output AC that is the peak value of the output AC will be equal to the magnitude of XE or magnitude of XL times the magnitude of VAC peak so we know what is VAC peak let's write that down here XC over XL times 4 VM over 3 pi this is the V output AC peak value and why did we find the peak value of the output AC this is required to find what is the output AC RMS to find the ripple factor V dash RMS which is the output AC components RMS is equal to the V output AC peak over square root 2 this is equal to 4 VM over 3 square root 2 pi times XC over XL now we know the RMS value of the output AC component now we need to find what is the output DC component which we already know is 2 VM by pi now we need to find the ripple factor which is equal to V dash RMS over VDC we know both the values let's substitute them 4 VM by 3 square root 2 pi times magnitude of XC over magnitude of XL divided by 2 VM by pi let's cancel the pi term VM term 2 becomes 2 here and square root 2 cancel we get square root 2 here so the resultant is square root 2 over 3 times magnitude of XC over magnitude of XL so we can write finally the ripple factor is equal to square root 2 over 3 times magnitude of XE or magnitude of XL but a point to note here is wherever we have omega that needs to be substituted in XE and XL we have to substitute 2 omega naught because the AC component at the output of the full wave rectifier we have or we considered is the second harmonic component which is the most dominant component at the output so this should be kept in mind while substituting to get the solutions for problems the most important thing out of the ripple factor formula is ripple factor is independent of the load resistor but we have to make sure that both the conditions we assumed are valid those are mentioned here but one thing is we know that XC should be very small compared to load resistor and XL should be very high compared to the parallel combination of XC and RL but the real question is what is the minimum inductance value that we can have we have a topic for that that is critical inductance L suffix C the concept behind finding this value is we know what is IDC in fact if you look at IDC IDC is equal to VDC over RL which is VDC is 2 VM by pi VDC by RL so let's put RL here so that it becomes IDC we know IDC 
but we don't know what is IAC. So let's find IAC peak. IAC peak is equal to VAC peak or magnitude of the reactance offered by the inductor XL. This is equal to 4 Vm over 3 pi times 2 omega naught L. This is again written as 2 Vm over 3 pi omega naught L. And the interesting fact to observe here is the AC magnitude peak is inversely proportional to the inductance. When inductance value is equal to critical inductance, IDC value will be equal to magnitude of IAC peak. So let's find that value. 2 Vm by pi RL is equal to 2 Vm over 3 pi omega naught L. So let's cancel the 2 Vms here and pi. So we get, and of course this is valid at L is equal to LC. So let's substitute L is equal to LC. So LC, the critical inductance value will be equal to RL over 3 omega naught. From this value, we have found that IAC peak is inversely proportional to inductance value. So when inductance value is equal to critical inductance, IAC peak is equal to IDC. So if inductance value is greater than critical inductance, IAC peak will reduce below IDC, which is in fact desirable. We have to make sure that inductance is picked in such a way that it's always greater than critical inductance so that IAC peak is always less than IDC. So the summary for better filtering the inductance used in LC filter should be greater than LC. If you like the video please give a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe and thank you for watching.